Hey guys, it's Martina from Closet Code and I basically just sat down and did a get ready with me. I shared my outfit at the end. I kind of just discussed or kind of lightly shared what products I was using, but just really talking on some points that kind of came to my mind and what's kind of been going on with me. And I hope you guys like this look and if you want to see everything, keep watching. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna just get right into it. So I got like recommendations of doing a get ready with me. I'm starting out with the Somo CC Me syrup, the Summer Fridays. This is amazing. Love it. Um, but yeah, I got recommendations on doing like a get ready with me, like a chit chat. My friend said it would be a good idea to try it out. So I said, why not? Let me just do it. And so whatever, I just decided to jump into it. And I don't know, I'll just talk about like life in general, what's kind of going on. I don't know, anything that comes to my mind. And then I'm moisturizing with, if you guys ever need a really good moisturizer recommendation, I recommend it. I don't know if it's going to focus. But the Ule Hendrickson, Hendrickson C Rush Brightening Gel Cream. It's so, so good. It's super hydrating. It, um, I don't know, it doesn't leave your skin feeling like sticky or it never feels, makes me feel like I'm oily. And I don't know, I love it. It's actually my favorite moisturizer and it's something I've repurchased time and time again and I love it feels so good but yeah what have you guys been up to what has everybody been doing honestly what I've been doing is looking at these cat memes I don't know if you guys have seen this latest cat meme yet but I love it so much I think it's hilarious and I literally I just sit here all day and look through like 50 million of them and just laugh because I love them so much and then I always like to get my skin just very hydrated fresh fresh but yeah how is everyone what's everyone up to i feel like a get ready with me is kind of always more interesting just because i feel like you need to know what your talking points are gonna be like what you have to bring up you know what i mean i feel like it's something that you definitely gotta have like a vision an idea what to talk about because i feel sometimes we'll just sit here and uh, or I'll just sit here and know, you know, not know what the hell to be talking about, but I'll still figure something out. But I definitely wanted to talk about, like, if you have any anxiety moving forward with something that's been going on in your life. I feel like I've been so anxious over the last few months that I definitely feel that it's good to always tell someone that, you know, like, you're not alone if you're feeling like you don't know what's going on in the world. You feel like you don't know what's your place in the world. I feel like it's okay you know and i feel like if i had more people to tell me it was okay when i was feeling like this over the last few months you know i feel like it would have helped me a lot just because of everything i was going through and kind of feeling and all of the emotions at that time but i just want to say whoever needs to hear it you're gonna be okay i mean it's easier said than done in the moment you know because we always like i don't know i feel like we worry a lot as humans we worry and i mean it's okay i feel like we're all going through different things i feel like we're all on our own paths and I feel like life always in itself gets a little overwhelming, but it's really up to you to, you know, do what you want with it and you control, you're the master of your life, so you control your happiness, you control your emotions, so it's really, sometimes you can't, I love to hear this one where sometimes it's like, it's not, you can't control the situation, but you can control how you react to it, and I think that's so powerful because, you know, a lot of the time we get ourselves worked up because of something that has happened, but the truth is we can't control what happens, you know, life is always gonna happen, but it's really the only thing we can control is ourselves and our reactions and how we react to things. And I feel like that's so important because I feel like a lot of the time, it's not even the situation that gets stressful, but just with the anxiety and like our own feelings of how we feel, like will make you stressed out, you know what I mean? So I feel like, I feel that it's important to just, I don't know, tell yourself, Pat yourself on the back now and then, tell yourself all of the good you're doing and don't focus on all of the negative or what's going on because those things will really pile up on you and make it feel like, you know, nothing's going right when that's not the truth. I mean, there's so many simple things that we have to be grateful for and I feel like that's something that I try and like push with myself all the time just to remember to be grateful and all of the little things that you can be grateful for. I mean, when a thousand things seem wrong, there's still a thousand things that are going right that you don't even notice that we take for granted every day. So I feel like that's super important to kind of look and think on that but i just wanted to say that just to whoever needed to hear it and put it out there but yeah i am actually going out with a friend and i decided to just kind of like to this i'm trying to cut out saying like because it's a bad habit and i feel like i feel that i say it too much 
which I've been called out on it, personal. I've, been, I've literally been called out on it recently, so I'm making a conscious effort to not say life as much. So I'm really, I'm really making a conscious effort because I feel that I feel that I say it too much, so I'm really making this, this, I'm trying to tell myself constantly, do not say it, do not say it. There's so many other words in your vocabulary to use. I just, I was about to say it again. But you know, I think it's a habit. I've been saying it a lot, so it's become a habit. So I'm really trying to limit how many times I say it. But yeah, I feel like also I want to talk about content, like what's going on with me, what I'm thinking about doing, and you guys can tell me if you like these ideas so I know that I should go through and do it. But I definitely want to do more fashion videos, definitely, of course. I really think that I want to even throw maybe a Christmas lookbook. Last year I did a New Year's lookbook and I received pretty good feedback about it. So I'm like, this year should I do a Christmas lookbook or should I do another New Year's lookbook? You guys tell me. Or do people want Thanksgiving looks like things to wear to your Thanksgiving dinners or is it super casual just because it's more family related you know I don't I don't know I'm not a big Jamaica didn't have Thanksgiving so the first time I ever really experienced Thanksgiving was last year so I mean I saw like uh, let's stop with this like I saw my boyfriend's family last year and you know I get it's like all of your extended family and close family too but I don't know if it's something where people really like dress up and plan a look or what they're gonna wear obviously you need something to wear but I just don't know if people are more casual about it if they're you know people are interested so if you guys are please let me know but I don't know I'm thinking of great like inspo ideas I love when who inspire me put up videos so I I try to do the same um, but you know to me I love get ready with me videos I really do. I really do. Some of my favorite, like Karen's. I love, of course, love Desi, Jackie, all those gals. But I wanted to try. For me, I like making videos that I like to watch. So whatever I find myself watching frequently on YouTube, I feel like those are the type of content that I want to make also. Just because it's, to me, it's things that I want to watch, that I want to see. So that's kind of what I want to put out. Truthfully, doing all of this was definitely out of my comfort zone, but I said, let me try and just do something, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But, we shall. His eyebrows are trying me today. But yes, yeah, since this is just like a simple meet up with my friend, I'm not gonna go crazy on the makeup, I'm just kind of gonna do one of my usual concealer looks where I don't do any foundation, I just do like my concealer, my powder, and I'll bake my face, kind of give me some angles, you know, work the natural assets. So that's kind of what I do with looks like the one I'm currently doing. It's nothing super fancy, just because it's nothing like, today isn't anything big, so sometimes I don't like to waste foundation. I really focus the this is the instant retouch primer pro filter soft matte by Fenty which I love it really makes your face like look super smooth so I always focus it under my eyes but I also do my whole face like I always do all of my face and I always try and rub up with the skin you know all the greats aka Karen <laughs> all of the greats always tell you that you should rub your skin up to prevent aging and wrinkling your skin and stretching your skin so you know, I'll listen. I'll listen. Next, as I said, like it's not a makeup tutorial or anything. I'm just kind of getting ready talking, but I'll list and mention the products I am using and I'm going to use below. And I really kind of just mainly focus on my under eyes. I focus on these under eyes. I forget this nose up in here. And to be honest, sometimes I like that no foundation look on good, better days. You know, good, better skin days. You know, you can't really say you're having a good skin day. Today's not really. Today's not okay. But you know when you can't really say you're having a good skin day because your skin hairs you and then it just breaks out and then after you've been going a week strong and the minute you choose to open your mouth and say, hey, my skin looks good, then all of a sudden you have 15 bumps. So I'm not going to talk on it. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. But... 
Yeah, to be honest, this is my favorite like concealer of life. To, I don't know, it's one of those old reliables that never disappoints me. The LA Girl Pro Conceal, the high definition corrector concealer or whatever. Mine's in Cool Tan. That's always been the shade that I've always used. But Cool Tan, Cool Tan knows what it's doing. And then since I'm not doing foundation, sometimes I like to use my brush to um, blend it in just to get like more coverage because I feel like when I do my sponge, it doesn't cover up as nicely, but I use my sponge to buff out the edges. But I like it just for that. Just for the color it gives. But I definitely love the LA Girl Pro Conceal. But yeah, I also kind of wanted to talk on post-college depression because I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't come up like top not like working on like <laughs> but i feel like it i feel that it's something that people do not speak on a lot and i feel like it's something that definitely should be brought to someone or everyone's attention or whoever needs its attention because i feel that a lot of us graduate with a lot of expectations and then when we come out we all or most of the people i know come out and really feel that sense of like I don't know what's going on I'm not sure what's up with my life where do I go next and I mean it's okay like it's definitely okay to feel this way it's definitely okay to feel like you don't have it all figured out we don't need to in the span of a month of graduating do you know what I mean I feel like I feel that I feel that we definitely put a lot of external or put a lot of internal pressure on ourselves because of the external pressure that we feel with this situation because I feel that every person that you meet especially after graduating and family family friends people you know friends you meet up and it's like oh how are you doing you just graduated wow what are you doing now where are you working where are you at you know and it's okay to be like not like it's okay to say that you're not where you want to be yet you know what I mean you're it's okay to say that I'm still trying to figure everything out and I definitely feel that's okay and I feel that there's this stigma that we need to have everything figured out immediately when the truth is I don't think that's realistic you know like none of us come out and just have it all figured out and I feel to expect to have that like I figured everything out feeling is honestly I feel like it's just gonna make the situation harder for you I think it's better to accept to know that you know everything happens for a reason and everything happens in God's time on the when it's supposed to happen so I feel that we shouldn't put that pressure on ourselves of having it figured out just immediately because the truth is none of us will and i feel like it's very 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 pressuring to just you know take the weight of feeling that everything needs to be done instantaneously and i just feel that it's just not fair to yourself so don't pressure yourself to do that you know i feel that things that i would have said to myself that are definite like if you guys see me wrong in my eyes you already know it's because i recognize this it like but I feel that we need to just realize that everything's not going to be always as planned. Everything's not going to go always as course, but it's okay. And it's okay to use this time to figure things out. It's okay to use this time to navigate where you want to move next. I feel that it's important to take a step here and use that step to your advantage and move up. But everything's not going to happen overnight and you're not going to figure out everything overnight. And I feel that it's important to understand and know that. I feel that it's very important because I feel that I struggled so much with, you know, everyone having such high expectations for me and feeling like I'm not living up to, you know, what I should be doing. And it becomes hard and it's actually puts so much pressure on you because you definitely or I definitely have had that feeling of, you know, feeling like I'm letting my family down. I'm letting whoever down just because I don't not because I haven't done anything or not or not because I did anything wrong but I just feel it's because I haven't done all of the great things I know I'm meant to do just yet and I feel that it's okay to not know immediately especially in that first year but use your time wisely you know make all the connections you can I feel that that's the most important part you know you never know like sparking up a conversation with somebody on the elevator or somewhere somebody somewhere like sparking up a conversation you never know that could open a door for you that you you never thought of so it's really important to keep positive thinking you know don't let the negative overwhelm you and don't let those negative feelings make you feel like you're drowning you know what i mean because this pressure to like have everything figured out it, it's real and i've definitely seen that it's real it's definitely real for sure for 100 percent sure i know that like having life figured out pressure is super real but it is okay i'm telling you like i'm not liking this i'm telling you that 
you will figure it out. It just takes time. But don't beat yourself up if everything's not working out in the same instance that you want it to. I definitely feel that way because honestly, a lot of the pressure I know I personally felt came from just like other people like saying like, like saying like, like, <laughs> it came from people saying to me that, you know, where are you right now? What's going on? And people asking your parents things and people asking you things. And the truth is people need to stay out your business. And that's a fact. But I know nobody's, nobody's trying to like attack you or do anything like that. Obviously, it's not coming from a place of that. It's just coming from a place of seeing where you're doing and that's okay. But if somebody says like they're not sure, encourage them. Don't break them down. Don't, you know, oh, you haven't figured out yet what's going on with you. You don't, whatever. Don't do that to people because that creates so much more stress on them. And just don't allow that negative energy to consume you. I feel like it's important to if somebody doesn't know what they're doing encourage them just tell them keep going after whatever they're passionate about keep going after whatever they like you know if you feel that something brings you the most joy and you definitely feel like you can make money from it go ahead shoot try it you know we're still young i feel that it's never too late to try something new try and fail and try again and the truth is you never know what you're really gonna love or you're meant to do if you don't go out and try it you know you may just feel discouraged and discouraged and that discouraged that discouraged mindset is not gonna help or take you anywhere. I feel like everything happens for a reason, as I said, everything happens in its own timing. And that's another thing, I feel like I do that with myself. I feel that I always like put, like, put. I feel that I put a lot of pressure on myself in terms of timelines and deadlines, in terms of, you know, we all wanna be successful, everybody wants to be successful at a certain age or by a certain point in time. And the truth is we're all moving at different pace. Each and every single one of us, we are all moving at different pace, so we will all be on a different path in a sense. You know, just because your friend got promoted in a job doesn't mean that you're not going to get promoted in your job soon, you know? Just because your friend was able to buy a house right now doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to buy your house when it's the right time, you know? So I feel like that external pressure, especially with, you know, being able to see everything on social media, people buying houses, cars, this and that, and a lot of people receiving all of these things from partners and people. No shade, I like that energy. I like that energy. But you know, just because you see a lot of these things, you know, it's okay. It's definitely okay to not be where someone else is at. Because as I said, like in life, we're already gonna be on different journeys. No two people's life is the same. No two people choose the exact same things. Everyone goes on different paths. And because of this, you know, we're all gonna have different outcomes. But that doesn't mean that your outcome's not gonna be great. And I feel like that's something that I had to definitely teach myself and push more of the importance of just really figuring my life out for me and going at my own pace and what works for me, M-E. And I feel that is so important. So just my two cents on how I feel about that because I know that's something that me, other friends, people I know struggle with, just, you know, especially with living in a digital age, you know, I really believe that Instagram is really the highlights, you know, not everybody goes on and shares that, oh, this deal didn't work out for me, I went out to this meeting crying, or, you know, like, this person turned me down, most people don't show that, they show the, you know, I made a million dollar deal, or I just, you know, my house purchase went through, there's so many times people are purchasing, and they're bidding against other people, and they don't win, they, you know, they don't win the bid, so it's like, that's difficult, and sometimes you may be crying and sad over this, and you would never know, so it, that's just to really say, we are all going through a different process, all at different times, all at different periods, but it is okay to be on your own journey and like moving at your own pace. I feel that's so important just to kind of move how you feel comfortable and do what you feel comfortable doing and don't feel pressured by what other people have going on. Don't feel pressured by what other people have going on. So recently, well not really recently, I feel like since last year, I've been wanting to go to Tokyo. I'm speaking it all into existence, I'm putting it out there, setting my intentions for Tokyo. I really want to go to Tokyo within the next three months for my birthday. So it's definitely something like I'm really looking into, really seriously planning because Tokyo is happening. I really want to go to that side of the world. And I don't know, something with Tokyo, the vibes, the fashion. I'm just really interested in it and I really want to go. And then when I go, I definitely plan on doing like a Tokyo lookbook like life in Tokyo, I don't know, something, but obviously lots of content while I'm there, 
I like to enjoy things and relax, but at the same time, I don't want to ever feel that like, oh, I felt like I should have did something in terms of, you know, memories, realistic with the content. I feel definitely that sometimes I hate having that regret feeling of feeling like I should have made the video or I should have did this and I didn't. So for me, I definitely feel that I really need to make sure I get my content clicking in Tokyo. But I'm really trying to be out there next year for my birthday. So... That's definitely something I'm trying to plan out. Definitely something I'm trying to plan out. And then, where else? Let me think of where I want to travel. I love travel. I think travel is such an amazing experience. I love seeing things from other people's perspectives. I love different cultures. I love seeing the fashion, how people dress, how people like live their lives. I love that aspect of traveling. And I feel like I learned so much. But I just love to experience new things. I feel like I'm definitely like a busy bodied, if you don't know what busy bodied, that's I feel like that's a Caribbean word. But busy bodied in a sense is you just always want to be somewhere all over the place. So I feel that sometimes when I'm home for too long, I'm like, I'm over this. But at the same time, I love being home. Don't get me wrong. I love being home. But at the same time, sometimes I'm like, I'm over this. I want to go somewhere. I want to see something new. Honestly, I'm dying to go back to LA. LA is my, it's the one other place I'd probably move to. When I get that bag, you know, I'll be in LA. I feel like that's everybody, like, when I get that bag, I'm in LA kind of vibe. But LA, the West Coast, the vibe is just different. The West Coast vibe is just something special. I love it. I don't know, the energy around it, it's just really good and I really love it. And I definitely will be finding myself in LA very soon. I miss it. So I definitely need to get a trip plan, get myself together. And I'll be out there. I'll be out there. I can see my find of this battery pack is about to die. So I am about to swap it out. And I shall be right back. I'll be doing this extra powder. I'll be planting this because I'm oily. I'm oily. Okay, yeah. So I definitely feel that I want to be back travel bucket list for me right now where I want to go Greece obviously obviously Greece is most definitely one of the top toppers on my list right now next um, places genuine like generally I want to go to um, I think Bali Thailand places like those what well, top 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 of my list right now is Tokyo and Greece definitely Tokyo and Greece I flex on like Beijing, I think Beijing, like China. Touch a little bit of the, some of the deep heritage out there. But definitely, I'm not doing a wing or anything like that. I just like to really um, drag the eyeliner along my eye. Why do we always make the weirdest faces when we're doing like eyeliner, bottom eyeliner? Or at least I do. I'm looking fucking strange. I'm looking crazy. I'm looking crazy. But I think eyes are the windows to the soul. I love eyes. I love the Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil. However, I wish that I didn't have so much problem sharpening. Yesterday, I somehow I wanted this Kat Von D liner because you know I feel like Kat Von D always does the best eyeliners. I wanted to like line my inner corner a little bit. So yeah, I always feel like she has the best liners, and somehow I managed to get the lady yesterday to give it to me. She was like, "Did you get your birthday?" I was like, "Well, my birthday is about to be in three months, but for this year, I feel like I did it was super long ago." And she goes, "Don't worry, I got you." She was the nicest. That's probably one of my best ever Sephora experiences in terms of like service. She was really nice. She was like, I got you, don't worry about it. Is that okay, girl? That VIB sale is actually going on right now. I went yesterday. I didn't get anything. My friend got something and it actually starts today, but she still even gave it to me yesterday. She's really sweet, to be honest. I didn't get her name, but she was probably the best experience I've had. I've had there. 
I think the best customer service experiences I have, I always feel like the person, you know, when somebody gives you that I got you attitude, don't worry about it, everything's gonna be fine, you know? Like, I like that kind of attitude. Not the people who are like rushing to get you out and they don't care, like, not that kind of vibe. The people who are really sweet and will be like, I got you, don't worry, I'm gonna work something out for you. Love those people. So, if you're one of those, shout out to you because you're appreciated. It may not seem so all the time, but you are. I love those kind of people. Those kinds of people make me happy. They make me feel very happy. But I just do all the extra stuff when it comes to my eyes because I love dramatic, very lively eyes that just... The eyes need to haunt you. Does that make sense? Not haunt in a bad way, haunt in a good way. Where it's like... To be honest, one of my favorite, not of my facial features, my eyes are nice though, but one of my favorite features of our face is the eyes. I don't know for me. What's, I don't know. I've never asked anybody what's their favorite feature. I know some people like lip. I know people who are into brows, love brows. I'm definitely an eye person. I love, I love, love, love eyes. I feel like, I feel that. Eyes just brighten. I don't know. I feel that the eyes are really the windows of the face. Ooh, that went in my eye too. So here comes the tears. Lord, please prevent tears, please prevent tears. Mm, child. Mm. When one thing goes wrong, then 50 others go wrong. Story of life. And I always do just a little extra right. Right by the eyes. As I said, guys, eyes are really my, my favorite part. So I always do them a little extra. Just a little bit extra. Just to brighten, I don't know, something about eyes. Something about eyes. And I mean, I'm almost done. I don't have much left to do. I'll dust off my face. <laughs> I'll dust off my face, kind of just do any final touches. And I'm gonna hip hop out of here. I feel that I'm doing well on time. I'm not super bad. I mean, I may speed up this video just a little toops. Who remembers that word toops? Does anybody use the word toops? I like the word toops. Just like a little, just no toops. I also feel like I have so much Instagram content that I need to upload, but I've really been slacking. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just over it. And I can't be bothered. But serious question though. So I have Closet Code's Instagram page as well as I do have Magic Tina Wina. If you don't follow either one, or if you follow one, follow both. They're gonna be here right now. Follow. But should I put more fashion on like inspo content, on closet code, and just do my regular posts on Magic Tina Wina? Or do you think I should just do my, I don't know, my regular everyday whatever I do on Magic Tina Wina and just save strictly fashion? Or do you guys like when I just use one or incorporate both? I'm trying to think of what makes more sense, how to like divide and conquer in terms of time and utilization better. I feel like it's super important. I want to punch that face a little bit. Maybe that to set. Maybe to set in my life. Get my life to set into place. Imagine if you could set your life and setting spray into place. I wonder. I wonder what things would happen. I'm super wet right now, don't worry. I need this to last last. I need this to last, last, last. I do. I need to, need to clock me in for the day and stay. I'm not playing with it. I'm not playing with it. You know, guys, ignore me and my extraness for the eyes. I just like to make sure hair is set. Because especially with the hair, I feel like hair always moves. Hair always moves, especially with all this hair on my face, man. Feel like I just usually do that final back up and I just jot it into my face. Pretty though, looks good from here. Can't see it though. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I've kind of been going back to the Too Faced. It's a gold highlighter. Everything on the bottom is kind of gone. It's rubbed off. But I really do love this Too Faced highlighter. But before I even get into that. So I've been using the Monsieur Big, the Lancome 
mascara for my bottom lashes just because I've had this as like a free sample or something and I'm kind of out of mascaras and I don't really want to repurchase what I have. I have the Shayla Big Shot, which I do like, don't get me wrong. But recently I've just been feeling like everything runs under my eyes and I hate the runny look. So I've been liking this. Honestly, I haven't seen much running, but I know they have a waterproof one. So I think I might purchase the waterproof one just to try it out and see if I like it. For face, sometimes I'll play around with the eyes. But in terms of the face, I really, if it's something... Easy, I'll usually do the no foundation, just this concealer with powder. But if it's something where I'm like nighttime, especially going out, I always do full foundation and everything. But this is just kind of what works for me, so I just do this. To be honest, one of my best friends, she does like concealer all the time, she doesn't own foundation, I swear, and she always looks amazing. So I kind of got that concealer thing from her. And you know, we don't talk about skin over here because we know what happens. But whenever I'm having better days, we know what I'm talking about. Whenever I'm having better days, I definitely can do the concealer. I mean, usually most are better days, but you know, we don't, I'm, not, I'm not touching on that topic. I'm not touching on that topic because I'm not gonna play myself like that because we know. We know, child. We, we know how I like to play. And I've been definitely going back to this blush, the NARS Orgasm. I'm pretty sure, oh, no, it's not. This is NARS Amor. Lies. The NARS Amor I've definitely been going back to, and I, I've really been liking it a lot. A lot, a lot. I've been really getting back into blush. For a while, I stopped wearing blush. I wasn't really into it, but I like blush again, I feel. I like blush. I definitely feel like I like a little blush again, just... Just that pinky and, and pew, you know what I mean? Pew. Talk to me nice. I feel definitely, I love that. That blush game again, I'm back in it. And finally, with my Too Faced. Do you ever feel like you're looking up and I'm looking straight at the brush? Okay, never mind. Like when you're looking for something like a brush or something and you just can't find it and then it was actually the one that was touching your hand the entire time. And just silly. So I just I just like something about it. But genuinely, when I really when I really set it up, I love the Fenty matchsticks. This is wrong. Eleven, eleven. I'm a nose highlight person. I'm definitely a nose highlight person. To be honest, if I'm not doing any makeup and I run out of the house, there's two things I will always put on my face. This naturally will just be on my face if I'm leaving the house. It doesn't matter how quick. As long as I'm leaving the house, I always like to do right there too with the highlight just to I think it amplifies you. Like so. Yeah, there's two things I'll always leave. I'm always doing edges. I'm not leaving the house without edges. It's not happening. Like, if I need time for one thing, it's gonna be those edges. I'm not some period. So, <laughs> those edges will always. Did I touch any other? I don't remember. Oh, I think I did. <laughs> I think I did. Yeah, if it's one thing, those edges, ooh, child, best believe I'm doing those edges. Those edges are definitely being graced by God. Yeah, for sure. Edges would be my number one thing. Some people are like, no, I can't leave it on mascara. Or I've heard people like, I have friends who like do eyebrow. I have a friend who does lip liner. You guys know who you are. Yeah, I have a friend who loves her lip liner. She, mm. <laughs> She'll be always doing her lip liner. I have another friend. She always fills in her eyebrows. I definitely, if I have the choice, I would do highlight and um, yeah, I would do highlight and I would do my edges. I know edges isn't really makeup related, but the men just gotta be there, sis. They got to be there. Or I won't. <laughs> I won't be there without it. I don't know, I just feel like without edges I don't look like myself. I just, I just don't look like who I identify to be. I just feel like it's not me without edges. And a final spray. And I'm gonna jump, put on some lip liner, and then you'll see the look. Thank you guys so, so much for sitting through me chatting about just anything. I really just had some topics or some pointers that I thought of, and I really just kind of wanted to speak on them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for this look, because I love it. And I just kind of threw something together, but 
it ended up coming out really well so I really really like it but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe 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 like comment share and thank you guys so much for watching love you guys